Hello everybody, this is Travis, you're at Tipo's Corner. We have a new deck and it's a, a spin-off of the conniving bypass deck we had with Illuminator Virtuoso. Um, because we had a YouTube subscriber, uh, Kupalot, mentioned that he had come across a similar deck and they'd also had uh, Light Paws in it. And that was a good reminder for me because I've always been interested in Light Paws and I have four copies of her now. So I put together a deck. And it's not white blue, it's white green because uh, with the Illuminator Virtuoso, the goal of that one was we would have lots of blue instants that only cost one mana. And they were featured around protecting the creature and then allowing that protection spell to also let him connive at the same time. Excuse me. So with this case, since we have light pods, we don't want to use a lot of instants, we want to use enchantment auras. And auras are strange for me in my mind because I first joined... Uh, around unlimited, you know, third edition back in the 90s, so they didn't really have enchantment auras the way they do now. This is kind of a a change in the way that they've identified them over the years. So it still takes a little second for my brain to wrap around the change from what it was used to all those years ago. But here's the star of the show, Light Paws Emperor's Voice. It's a legendary fox advisor for 2-2. When an aura enters the battlefield under your control, if you cast it, you can search for an aura card with mana value equal to or less than that aura, and with a different name. Put it onto the battlefield, attach the light pause, and then you shuffle the rest of your deck. So it has to be, it should be a positive enchantment, right? You don't want to cast negative enchantment, or, I mean, you could cast a negative enchantment on your opponent, uh, one of your opponent's creatures, and then as long as you summon a good one to put on light pause. We don't want to uh, inadvertently punish light pause. Um, but that's the idea, and then we have four copies of Jukai Naturalist as well because everything we have is an enchantment spell this time around, and we wanted to make them cheaper, and so Jukai Naturalist is great for that in the current environment. And as far as creatures go, we've only got, uh, let's see, over at the high end, we've got a Shrine Steward, which I've used in my Shrine decks a lot, but you can also search for an Aura. So in this case, I figured it's too expensive to put a lot of multiple copies in, I think, but, you know, at one point later on in the game, we might have a call to get a very specific kind of aura out. And it could be something like Prison Sentence that we use to paralyze a creature. Or maybe we just need to buff up something. Um, but uh, it adds for a bit of flexibility and a sort of tutoring effect, a way to search up what we really need when we need it. So I thought that would be a good addition. And we have three copies of Denitha Benelius Hope, Legendary Creature. She's got First Strike, Vigilance, and Lifelink. The reason she's relevant to this deck is when she enters the battlefield, you can put an aura or equipment card from your hand or the graveyard onto the battlefield attached to Denitha. So, not uh, similar to Light Paws, right? A little bit, but we can also get stuff from the graveyard. So if we've lost Light Paws and whatever enchantments were on Light Paws, we could get the best one back and, uh, and get it on a First Strike Lifelinker. That would be awesome. And then our final creature, Sky Bless Samurai, 4-4 four, four Flyer. It costs less for each enchantment you control. So we're hoping to get that cost down to, you know, 4 or 3, especially if we get multiple Jukai Naturalists out. So, the rest of the deck real quick. Radiant Grace, add 1 Vigilance, Audacity, 2 and Trample. Um, let's see, Outland Liberator. Oh, we do have one other to destroy target artifact or enchantment of the opponents that we don't like. Um, two borrowed times. I'm thinking of taking out things like Shieldred and getting those off the board for that one. Uh, Cathar's Call so that we can get uh, additional creatures out as tokens. Prison Sentence to just freeze somebody in their tracks. Cigar is Imprisonment to, to enchant a creature so they can't attack or block. We've got one Fall of Lord Conda, Lord Conda to exile a target creature with mana value 4 or greater. Um, so we do have a couple of ways. We don't have a ton of interaction. But we've got a couple of ways to paralyze our opponent's creatures and a couple of ways to exile them. One careful cultivation to get the human monk if we need uh, through the channel ability if we need to ramp a little bit. Or we can just uh, add it to a creature, get plus one, plus three, and have reach. Grafted growth that enchants the land. It also lets us put a plus one counter on a target creature. And then the land we get to add two of any color for mana. Historian's Wisdom, we get plus two, plus one, and if you have the greatest creature on the board already, then you get to uh, draw a card as well. How for the Hunt, here's a Flash spell, and uh, with this one you get plus two, plus two, and Vigilance. Most Wanted, also Flash, Enchanted Creature gets plus two, plus one. Nature's Embrace, plus two, plus two. 
Sheltering Bows, plus one, plus three, plus you get to draw a card. And then Supernatural Rescue, uh, the spell you get to tap two creatures you don't control, and the one enchanted creature gets plus one, plus two. And finally, plus three, plus three, and reach for favor of Jukai. And a little bit of flexibility, we could channel that during as a battle trick if we needed to do it that way. So it's pretty simple overall. We're just trying to get these little buffs, uh, plus ones, plus twos, that kind of thing. Uh, and hopefully our creatures stick around. So let's show you the breakdown real quick before we go into the battles. 19 creatures ended up 3.0 average. Somehow I always managed to end up in this neighborhood. 24 land still. Uh, 19 creatures and 23 enchantments. And 14 of them are auras. So the rest, uh, let's see, I Ganjo for a special land. Boseju for a special land to eliminate uh, enchantments if I need it. And a lot of just... Uh, you know, dual lands and stuff like that so that I get the right color when I need it. Uh, it, it does mean that I'm going to have a lot of tap lands in there. So I don't have a board wipe in here yet, and that's usually when I first create a deck, I try and see if I can get by without a board wipe, and usually somebody comes along and they, they get so wide, like the soldiers or the human citizens or the zombies, and, and I'm like, oh, why don't I have a board wipe? Where's my board wipe? So we'll see what happens. We don't have anything that costs zero, so having light paws out and putting radiant grace on it won't really help us do anything. But one of my big things I want to do is get uh, Cathar's call over on light paws. That would be awesome. We are vulnerable to removal, of course. And since we have 19 creatures, it's a little on the low side. A little more expensive. And you notice this is one of the most expensive cards that I have. And so, of course, I get it dealt first. Because that's what Arena always does to me. You guys got to give me feedback in the comments sometime and let me know if this always happens to you too. Where it's it's always in your hand, the, vo the most expensive card. You know, the other two that are more expensive are the cards that become cheaper when we get more enchantments out. So I'm not going to pay full cost for those. Not if I can help it. Okay, everybody's putting out tap land. So the first couple rounds are without substance. Without any fireworks. Okay, do I want to hold on to Seed in the Empire? Probably not. Um, let's go ahead and do... Let's do the Virtuoso first. If they want to zap it with a damage spell... I kind of want to try and see if Light Paws will hang around longer. They're looking at it. They're thinking. A Shieldred on curve already. What in the world? You are messed up. See, draw a card, discard a card. Which one do we want to get rid of? Let's get rid of the Shrine Steward already. Flip down the land. And... I guess we'll just attack. I did mention I didn't have a way to get rid of uh, Sheldred, right? Not an easy way. I've only got a couple spells in the deck. And 
the uh, Shrine Steward wouldn't help me because those spells are not auras. I need something else. Fast. And look at that, they have two removal spells already handy. It's like Arena just calculated exactly the thing that would destroy me the most. So what do I do? I have to channel this just to get something out on the, the field. And I can't do anything else, really. Shieldred is like a one-man wrecking crew against me. No, I think she's female, isn't she? It's hard to tell looking at the body. Teferi already. Yeah, we are severely outclassed. Don't feel bad when you lose. Quite <laughs> a tough opponent. Who's that handsome devil? Okay, so you know what we're gonna do. I still can't kill Shieldred the way she is. She's still too tough as a 4-5. Yeah, I'm just going to have to quit. Alright, so we've got to get rid of one of these and put it in a board wipe. That's all there is to it. I've got so little interaction. I, It's not frequent enough for me to count on getting it. Of course, they get the perfect hand, right? They get an on-curve Shieldred. Even though they've got like at least three colors, they get exactly the mana that they need. So let's just go get like a depopulate. And because we want to try and stick to 60, what do we take out? Um, we'll take out the mana costing that costs four. Okay. Um, most of these are, these are all one-offs except for the borrowed time. All the auras are one-offs because you can't have things of uh, the same name called out if they're already on the board and put on light paws. So, let's try it again. This is kind of the way that we do things when I first make a deck is I tease the uh, board wipes into it as I get my butt kicked until I find the right balance between the concept that I wanted and what I have to do realistically to survive. I think some of our better matchups will be against the other colors. Probably black is our toughest color just because they have the most direct removal. And this is the problem why um, Wizards of the Coast is always talking about, people like uh, the head designer Mark Rosewater, always talking about the problem they have getting people to play with enchantments because the removal is so easy that you, you wasted a second spell on a creature that's already gone. Transformed already, so perfect start for them. If they have a red mana, look, they can get rid of Light Paws already. Luckily, we have extras. So we're going to take it for now. And they have another removal already. And that one exiles. And so we just have another one out. Already missed a land drop. Our opponent's not going to miss a land drop, right? Are all they going to do is they're just going to pound me with a 3-2 flyer and they, they just never run out of removal? 
All right, I was hoping to keep Light Paws out for one turn to, you know, get an extra enchantment out from this, but that's three of the star of my deck already gone. And I can't do much. I guess I can put out the Liberator now. Don't know that I want to put Radiant Grace out right now. We can exile the Aberration if I get in one more land. It's going to come in tap though, isn't it? Um... What about if we just put that on there now? And we can at least attack. And that gives them Vigilant in case they had a land creature they wanted to put down soon. And we can now afford the Samurai, which will be a flyer. So, there might be hope. Did he blitz that? Shoot. I think I'm dead. Is there anything I can do with that? They only needed four lands. Was that like a five turn kill? Well, it's hard to do anything when they have three removal spells on their first three turns. It's possible that the R decks just won't work. I think when Poop, when Koopalot made his comment, he was talking about how Light Paws was fetching more ores, but it was uh, a bit of a win more card was the way he phrased things. So you already had the upper hand. But we have we make things deliberately difficult here at T Pose Corner. We don't do the easy way out. We want to test the system. We want to test the limits. We want to test ourselves. But if a Sheldred comes, we'll be ready for it now, at least. Okay, the Naturalist comes out. Everything is suddenly cheaper. We do like that. Three colors already for them. And my opponent's name is Bombcaster, which sounds like a red kind of thing. Maybe they do truth bombs. Maybe that's the kind of casting they do. Or maybe they just fart a lot after dinner. Looking at Naturalist like he's going to get rid of it. Are you going to phase anything out or just they aren't going to phase it out? I don't have a copy of Phasing a Zalfir yet. They're going to destroy all the creatures on the third turn. So do we put out another creature? Um, I don't think it matters what color we put that at right now. Um, sheltering Bows is only good on a creature, so we're done. Sludge Monster doesn't affect me for now. And Sludge Monster is going to be destroyed next, right? So, I don't get that. Uh, we're still done. Why would you put out the Sludge Monster just to let it be destroyed? Do you have a, a return kind of spell? I get my Jukai Naturalist back next turn. Seems a little strange to me. And they're waiting. And they obviously have something they can do. No attacks in the turn. We've got to 
tread this fine line between putting the enchantment ores on our creatures and being subject to instant removal. You be brave. First strike. Okay. Let's do Benelli so. And let's see, she's already got Vigilance First Strike and Life Link. So let's put Sheltering Bows on her. We get to draw a card from that. And I guess we're done. No wait, let's see. Yeah, we're done. They can't pump it up enough to deal with Danitha. I know there's a hero inside you. We're we gonna do sacrificing. Who do I want to get rid of? Jukai naturalist. <laughs> Ooh. Can you stop me? You cannot. For a peaceful resolution. I don't think I started this. This war is getting out of hand. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. You never say that until you start to lose. Oh wow, that's a good card to get to refill your hand right then. They should toss away an extra land. Three, four, six, we've got seven. I'm gonna keep things the way they are. I'm playing it real conservative with our stuff just because I'm expecting us to lose creatures any second. Like that! We can't really stop that. They only have one removal in that whole area? I wonder if they have a counter spell. Memory deluge, because getting a five card draw wasn't enough for you a second ago. Well, at least they're tapping out. Okay. Our turn. Another Virtuoso, we're good with that. Let's do Radiant Grace on one of them. And let's get rid of Prison Sentence, I guess. And... Um, we'll go ahead and put one of those down now. And we'll go ahead and put Cathar's Call on the other one. And we have two of those, so hopefully that doesn't bite us. We're going to get rid of one. And now we have four creatures. So are you the type of deck that has a board wipe? You have Sludge Monster, Phasing of Zalfir, Elspeth Replenner. i, I got to assume that you're going to have more creatures. Where are all your creatures at? This is weird, man. Maybe they've just got a bunch of phasing of Zalfirs and they're gonna phase us out and or kill us. Okay. Kamigawa. 
We'll attack with those two. Stops the one. It's gonna take four points of damage. Okay. We're getting close to lethal. Toes gonna get. They're gonna take Dantha. I don't get any replacement in my hand, do I, if you take her away? And they got enough to cast her now. Usually, on most other cards that take things out of your hand, you get so at least a land or something. Here, they don't give you nothing. And that life gain is not going to be good for us. So what do we do? They don't seem to have their own kind of enchantments. Uh, we don't need to attack with those two. No, we do it that way. You're tapped out, aren't you? We play one of the exiled cards. Okay, so we'll just do four damage to you now. So you never get any lifelink off of this. Down to three. If you block everybody, I should still get lethal unless you bring another creature down. Okay, there's there's a creature. We just need something other than a land, basically. No right. secret is safe from me. Already went through I all my damage. On the inside who can help. Went through three light paws, right? No, that was the last hand. We haven't gone through light paws yet. Depopulate. Um I don't want to depopulate. Let's see. I guess we just want to attack with the two that we have. They could double block the Virtuoso and give Swarm Death Touch. If he double locks with those two, I can only take out one of them first. Uh, made it indestructible. Shoot. And it gains lifelink. Ugh. How did they have that? Nobody ever uses that. <laughs> and they get another lifelink there. Okay. How is it they, have, they get all the creatures out that they need to, and then they have the battle tactics ready? Just at the exact right time when I was close to lethal damage. So they're going to be back up to 13. Ouch. Okay, all we can do is draw a card. And it's a land. Uh, 
I did mention about I need something other than lands at this point, right? What are you gonna get back? The sledge monster? Okay. That's fine. We're just gonna have to start from scratch. Two, three, four. Thanks. No one, two, three. I'll be taking that now. Okay, so I get land yet again, which is not helpful. Come on, it's my turn. I waited for all your stuff. Let me play, please. Thank you. I might be able to get one point off the Planeswalker. If he's willing to sacrifice the Butterfly Swarm. They'd rather lose the Swarm than the Planeswalker. I feel bad for your mentor if that's your attack. Alright, now we need a creature. They've really got a good advantage right now. There we got to Deluge once, so they not only have more lands out already, but they probably took all the lands that they wanted and threw them back at the bottom. And now they're just getting Sludge Monster back, probably. We've gone through all of our most... Oh, we're getting Kotos back. Oh, great. Now None this of this is working is out well for us. Secret. I get a light pause. Woo Take action. What else do we want? Um, this one. you guys just full of everything full of something oh, the fun just started it's like your defenses aren't even there search for an aura we want cigars imprisonment we will cast Sigarda's Imprisonment on the Surge Engine. We will take action and we'll go get something that has Trample. And we'll attack with it. Yeah! Take that! They still get to draw three off of the Surge Engine. Nice value. Really nice card for blue. Mythic Rare. I feel like I need something to exile graveyards in this deck now. What else are you going to take from me? Probably Sky Blessed Samurai. Or my Virtuoso. Ha 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 ha. Fall of Lord Kanda. 
Uh, that doesn't work. That, well, that would work on the Shrine Steward, right? But I don't have any other copies in my deck. We're already more than halfway through all of our decks. They get to see what's in my hand now, right? I haven't gone up against this combination of cards before all in one deck. It seems to be fairly effective so far. Except for the fact that I have an 8-4 Trampler. And somebody coming in the sky. And you guys may want to double block this. Hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. So why would they do that now? I mean, that kind of tipped me off. They could have waited, made it indestructible, and killed Light Paws. And now <laughs> I, I get back the thing you took from me because that's the way the spell works. <laughs> Oh no, a Shieldred, that's why. Okay, they get a Shieldred. That changes everything again. Uh, gross. I already used my Depopulate. Why would you do it? Hexproof and Ninja... But I'm not... You can't block with that one. What is the deal? Can we exile that? See, the Hexproof didn't stop that because it was already attached to you. Alright, let's bring this one down. Let's attack with everybody. Figures. Death Touch and Indestructible. But I still get four trample points of damage, right? So if you can't take out my flyer next turn, I still got lethal. Let's see. I get to two treasure tokens and then draw a card. We can put that down and we get a new light pause. Do you have anything you can do against my flyer? That kind of helps me. Are you going to quit? We beat the Bombcaster. Woohoo! Even though they still ended up... What is it? As soon as I mention it, I think, I think Magic the Gathering has my house bugged. I think Wizards of the Coast has my computer bugged. The, the first thing I say is that we're going to be in trouble against Shieldred. And what happens? Everything we come up against is Shieldred, Shieldred, Shieldred. After Shieldred kind of took a breather after Brothers of War came out and was kind of missing in action for a little bit of the mix. But now, as soon as I say the name, she's all back. All right, that was a long video, so we're going to end it there. Um, I'm going to have... I think I'm going to go down the rabbit hole like I did with uh, the containment group, and I'm going to see what Light Paws does with other colors. And we'll do... We'll maybe journey through all of the different colors with her and see how things go. So white, green, white, blue, white, red, white, black decks, that kind of thing. Maybe would we do a mono white? Possibly. Uh, that is something worth thinking about. Um, probably I'm, I'm tending to keep Virtuoso and Danitha along for the ride, too. Uh, they seem to fit in well with the theme. Uh, yeah. Not bad. Kind of made for slow going. I played it slow and conservative. The one board wipe came in handy. Do I need two? Possibly. We actually managed to last a long time and get through more than half of our deck. And that's even with, when, with them taking some of our stuff that they thought they could use to win the game. They took, you know, they took our big card. They took Danitha away from us. And uh, we still got them. So good show, deck. Good show. Very good light pause. I like you. 
we're going to explore other colors in the future and see how that works. So uh, this has been Travis from Tipo's Corner. Thanks for joining me. Remember to like and subscribe and have a good one.